Greetings, I'm Pod Shellen here on Channel Peanut. With us today is peanut geneticist Chandler Levinson at the University of Georgia. Chandler, I hear you have some wild things to say. Indeed I do, Pod. Let's talk about the peanut plaguing pest, fall armyworm. While this pest is costly to control in the United States with pesticides, it's a real threat to food security in some regions of Africa in which access to pesticides and protective equipment is limited. That's nuts! What can we do about this? Well, Pod, I'm glad you asked. Fortunately, there's a special resource that we can use. Wild peanuts. Wait, what? You heard me! Wild peanuts! These are small, weedy peanut plants that sprawl all over South America. They have strong resistances that our peanut plants do not. We can move resistance genes from these plants to our peanuts. Want to see how to find a wild peanut with fall armyworm resistance? You bet I do! Alright, our goal is to identify a wild peanut plant that fall armyworms don't like to eat. To do this, we'll feed about 30 fall armyworms exclusively on leaves from each wild peanut plant. Then we'll record survival and growth rate to identify which wild peanuts impede fall armyworm growth and survival. Sounds simple enough. Great! First you'll need petri dishes to keep each fall armyworm in. In the middle of each dish, you'll place a cotton round to retain moisture. Are those the same pads that are used for makeup removal? You got it, Pod! Lastly, you'll need to put a filter paper on top of each cotton round to keep the fall armyworms from drowning in the water you'll later add. What's next? It's time to add food! Remember, 30 fall armyworms should be assigned to each wild peanut plant. Don't mix food sources. Also, it's important that the plants are not sprayed with pesticides. Whoa, what's that? Those are newly hatched fall armyworm pod. That's nuts! Yes it is, fall armyworm can only be ordered after you applied for a permit through the USDA, so make sure you go to their website. Okay, will do. Now we need to carefully place one fall armyworm in each Petri dish. The leaves need to be young and tender at this stage. Why is that? Tender leaves are easiest for the larvae to eat when they've just hatched. If you feed them tougher leaves, many will die and the experiment will end without us knowing if any plants were resistant. Oh, look at that little guy. Now we'll use parafilm, which is basically saran wrap, to seal the plate shut. Otherwise, the tiny larvae can crawl right out. Oh wow, we certainly don't want that. Indeed, Pod, we don't. We'll have to check every day whether or not the fall armyworms need more leaves to eat. When the worms get bigger, they'll eat quite a bit. Then, we'll weigh all the worms at one and two weeks into the experiment. Using statistics, this data can show us which plants impede fall armyworm growth and which plants don't. We'll also have to change their diapers. You're kidding me. I'm not, Pod. Here we are taking out a fall armyworm that's on that leaf. The diaper, by that I mean the cotton round and fil filter paper, are dumped into the trash. After the diaper is replaced, more food is added. When the worms get bigger, you'll have to do this every day. Oh, yikes. Boy, am I glad that I work in outreach on the Peanut Channel. Don't worry, Pod. You're welcome to volunteer in our lab anytime. Oh, uh, thanks. Can't wait. After a few weeks, the larvae will become pupa. During this stage, you don't need to do anything but wait. Just record the date they become pupa. What a relief. Yep. When they hatch into moths, you'll just need to record that date too. Then you can dispose of them as stated in the permit. Usually, we freeze them before disposing of them. Wow, we're almost finished. We're so close. Lastly, we'll run some statistical analysis to see if we've identified a resistant plant. Aw, I'm not so good with numbers. That's okay, Pod. Just consult a statistician. They'll help you. Okay, great. Following this method, I was able to find a resistant wild peanut plant. That's so wild! Yeah, I think it was because the leaves were just too hairy. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Hairy wild peanuts may one day be used to move resistance into our peanut plants. Yes, we hope to reduce pesticide use in the United States and to protect yields in Africa. I sure hope so. Well, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this public service announcement from Channel Peanut. Thank you, Chandler, for filling us in on wild peanuts. Tune in next time, folks. Bye. Bye.